The show k integral is a function whose behavior is determined by the values of its associated non-additive or fuzzy measure. In our introductory video, we gave an interpretation of the fuzzy measure's values as the relative output of workers when working in different teams. However, we could have any number of situations and interpretations that would be applicable. In fact, wherever we have multiple inputs that we want to aggregate into a single output and where we could reasonably expect those inputs to have a positive effect on the output. Here we address the problem of determining those fuzzy measure weights from collected data. Let's assume again that our context is worker production in a factory where everyone starts at 9am and then leaves once their shift is over. This time we don't actually know how productive each of the workers is but the factory manager gives us a nice big historical data set showing the shift lengths and total production each day. So from this data, the question is, what are the values associated with a Shoke integral model that closely approximates this data set? In answering this question, we need to decide how we want to quantify the term closely. In traditional regression analysis, the aim is to fit a hyperplane that reduces the overall sum of squared residuals when predicting each of the observed outputs. In addition to us fitting a function with more unknown parameters, we have some additional constraints that we need to account for in order to ensure the values we obtain in the end are consistent with the definition of a fuzzy measure. So we want to ensure those constraints are met and also make sure the function models the data as closely as possible. While this can be done using the squared residuals as the objective, what we'll present here is one approach that solves a linear program that minimizes the absolute residuals. This objective is usually referred to as least absolute deviation. We employ a few neat little tricks to achieve this. First, we'll consider an additional but equivalent form of the Shoke integral that represents the weights in what's called Mobius representation. These values will be the same whenever we consider a single worker but then, as we consider larger groups, we have an equation which is roughly interpreted as the marginal contribution of that subgroup or some measure of interaction. We'll see later that this will allow us to look at some simplifying approaches. The data set is then transformed from this format, three inputs and one output, to this format, where we create columns representing the minimum input of each of the coalitions. These are the values we'd use when calculating the function output in Mobius representation. And we can see that we're now looking for a hyperplane in terms of this extended space. This ends up giving us a set of data constraints. We then need to transform the objective, which at the moment uses absolute values to a sum of unrestricted variables. We do this by splitting each residual into two values, its positive and negative parts. When we solve for the minimum, one of these values in each pair will be zero. Now when we're setting up this linear programming problem, we're actually introducing two new decision variables for every observation we have. The last thing we need is to ensure that the fuzzy measure satisfies its monotonicity and boundary properties. The boundary property is ensured in Mobius representation by setting the sum of all the Mobius values to one. For the monotonicity constraints, we need to ensure that for any given subset, taking out any single input doesn't increase the weight. This requires k constraints for each subset of size k, and we know that altogether there will be 2 to the n subsets. And so as well as the number of decision variables determined from the fuzzy measure parameters and the number of observations, we also might have issues with the number of constraints required. In terms of reducing the number of variables, we can limit the size of coalitions we consider. In Mobius representation, a value of zero is often interpreted as indicating no contribution in terms of interaction in that group. And so simply leaving groups out of our problem just means that we're only accounting for interaction in smaller groups. Using a linear solver, we obtain the Mobius weights that minimize the least absolute deviations, which we can then turn back into our standard format. From this, we can read from our model the productivity of each team. It's worth noting that sometimes it's possible for very similar outputs to be obtained from quite different fuzzy measures, so some caution is required when drawing conclusions. As well as analyzing the existing data we have, the same model can also be used to make predictions, so that in this case we could forecast the productivity depending on the worker's schedule. For larger problems, 
making inferences from the many coalitions might become a bit daunting. Unfortunately, there are a number of interpretation calculations available such as the Shapley value indices, which estimate the average importance of each input, or interaction indices, which can evaluate the average importance of coalitions. Of course, it doesn't have to be workers. Our variables could be school subjects, and we have a database of student scores. We might be interested to estimate the importance of doing well in those subjects, or combinations of subjects, in predicting the student's starting salary. Or we could be looking at how evaluations from experts might predict some overall evaluation. Regardless, we now have a tool so that as long as we have access to some observed data, we can practically apply the Showcase integral and use it for analysis or to make predictions.